What up dude bros, I'm Frank, this is a group review of a few Star Wars Rogue One blasters. The Sergeant Jin Urso blaster, which is a semi-automatic flywheel blaster very similar to a Modulus or a Strife. Imperial Death Trooper Blaster, which is a three-shot spring blaster that's pump action. And a Captain Cassian Andor Blaster, which is a very simple spring blaster that's a single-shot pistol. Unboxing Madness begins! Included is the blaster itself, a six-round magazine, some Star Wars Nerf Elite darts, and the instructions. Included is the blaster, three darts, the instructions, and space junk, or some component. Yeah, that thing. Whatever that is. <laughs> Included is the blaster, three darts, and the instructions. So I'll give a brief overview of each of them one by one, and then show you the firing. Starting out with this one, this is personally the only one that really drew my eye because it's a flywheel semi-automatic blaster, and it's not proprietary completely because it still takes the in-strike stock and the in-strike front attachment nozzle. So even if you don't care about Star Wars and you're just a nerfer, you could still buy this and have fun with it because you can still customize it, and it's kind of a mix of some other blaster types. Like I said, front attachment nozzle does accept other in-strike things, a tactical rail up here, access door here, and a stock attachment point in the back. Pretty traditional magwell. Uh, this is the magazine magazine release, um, which is a little bit different than a lot of other Nerf blasters. Included is the six round magazine, but it's of course compatible with all of the in-strike uh, mags. I find it really funny that this is a Star Wars blaster because this is more reminiscent of an actual firearm than most other Nerf blasters. This is very clearly an M4 or an AR-15 pistol grip, and the lower receiver seems very similar to an AR or an M4. Even the dust cover right here, which is not functional in this blaster. The appearance of the mag release, um, although the mag release is a little bit high, but I can see why mechanically they couldn't put it over there because, you know, the magazine is right there. And then it might just be me, but this is kind of screaming MP5 SD up here. Um, put a little suppressor on it and look forward, and that's very similar to the MP5. And it's okay for Nerf blasters to copy off uh, firearms so long as they're all bright colors like this. It's just funny that it's a Star Wars blaster because they're not supposed to have human guns. They have like awesome space blaster guns that are way out there. They're human, but you know what I mean, like Earthling. Because it's a flywheel blaster, hold down the rev trigger, then pull the trigger. It's a semi-automatic blaster, meaning you have to pull the trigger every time like a strife or modulus. It's not like a rapid strike or hyperfire. The performance is very similar to other flywheel blasters of the same caliber. Uh, it is worth noting the trigger pull is very smooth. I am quite happy with that. And if you just heard it, this also has sound effects in the light up front area. And that occurs when you pull down the trigger halfway. It still has the lock in there, so if you have darts there and you're not revving, you can't pull the trigger all the way. But you can just go like pew 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 and that light. Intimidation. That's the basic overview. Now to the Imperial Death Trooper Blaster. This one's also pretty cool. Three barrels up front. This is a spring-powered blaster that shoots one at a time. It has a smart air restrictor system that fires one at a time. I have noticed that the top two fire just fine, but the last barrel shoots a little bit softer, and sometimes in the smart AR systems you can find that. And if you load in crummy darts, you can trick the AR to shooting out um, two darts at once, and it kind of like halfway shoots both, and it's not fun. Um, just use better darts if that occurs. To prime, you pull back the pump action handle down here. Now you're ready to fire again once. This also has lights and sound. When you prime, this other one turns on. And I have not found an off switch because that gets annoying. You can always take out the batteries. Batteries were included with all of these, including the Strife one, or, you know, the flywheel one. So you don't even have to hassle with install them, let alone buy them, so that's nice. Tech to cool rail up here, and it also has an in-strike stock attachment point back here. So if you slip it right on in there, and maybe as a stormtrooper, you might actually be able to hit something. Just kidding, of course you'll need an optic to be able to see. How can they hit anything with these stupid masks on? Prime action is pretty smooth overall. Um, actually a pretty comfortable blaster, fun to use. And dim lights though. Intimidation. <laughs> and the last one, uh, which is kind of puny and pathetic looking. Again, very reminiscent of the M4 with like a Vietnam style um, M4 mag. This is a single shot blaster. You front load like that into prime, you pull back the charging handle or you know, the priming handle, which is very similar to how you would actually charge an M4. Then you pull the trigger. This one also has sound. Tactical to cool rail up top, nothing else really to point out. Um, it's really little. I whine about this stuff and I wouldn't actually whine about this. It is fairly comfortable, um, but I don't think a performance nerf would buy this because it's just not optimized for that. More on that in my opinion, but here's the firing.
put everything up on the chronograph, nothing really performed very well. This guy got 51 feet per second. Middle one got 53 feet per second. And this one got 60 feet per second on an average of 10 darts um, each blaster, which means all of them are shooting noticeably lower than the average right now, which is about 70 feet per second for the Nerf Elite blasters. Overall opinion on these, the Star Wars blasters, just like a lot of other blasters in the past that have the, the Star Wars like licensing are more expensive than their counterparts. This guy was 50 US dollars at the Toys R Us. That's quite a bit more than a modulus and the modulus comes with all those tactical attachments and has like better performance and the same kind of functionality being flywheel semi-auto. All of that cost kind of comes with the licensing. This blaster has smooth operation and it's pretty fun to use but again the performance really isn't great out of out of any of these and if you wanted a three shot springer there are other options out there. If you're a Star Wars fan and you like these blasters they're fun to use and they work smoothly but their performance is just kind of bad. This guy is so small and puny um, and pretty expensive for its size and considering it's just a single shot spring pistol um, that I can't really push this or recommend it at all. If you're really into Star Wars or you really like their cosmetics or anything they did work well um, but hopefully you're a modder to get some more performance out of them. Group review I did miss some of the details that are covered in my more comprehensive reviews but I don't think anybody who's going to go buy a Star Wars licensed gun is really particularly interested in every single nerf feature. I assume the primary buyers of these are going to be Star Wars fans who don't really care as much about nerf. Um, if you're a hardcore nerfer and you just want a performance nerf gun, uh, there are better options out there. That being said, prop guns definitely have their place, but this one probably not. But that's the group review. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the section below. And as always, stay tactical.